So in this video, we're going to talk about why governments like when people go on strike. So when the so when the government in the United States creates inflation or in any country that has a reserved currency, only what happens is a lot of people got a lot of money in the beginning and it takes a while for that money to enter into the system. When that money enters into the system, it causes inflation because the people are not being more productive. More goods and more services are not coming into the economy. So for example, if I got a stimulus check, let's just say I got a stimulus check, for example, and I went out and I bought equipment with that extra stimulus money. Let's say I wanted to do home repair or I wanted to be a handyman. And so as a side job, I went out and I bought a bunch of tools with the stimulus money. And so I have my nine to five, but then on the weekends, I start offering my services as a handyman. So that increases the economy. It boosts the economy because now that economy has more services being offered. Or let's say, for example, with that stimulus money, I went out and I bought some farmland and I started growing food as a result. Now there's more food, right? just more products in the economy. So that boosts the economy. And now that there's more of it in the economy, it helps to bring the prices down because there's more of it, right? The more you have, the scale you have, it's, it's not as scarce. But if you have a scarcity of handymen, if you have a scarcity of people who are producing food, well, then that causes the prices to rise. Just like when a bunch of people quit nursing or the medical field because of the uh, vaccine mandates. So you had a lot of people that came out of the, out of offering the service of being a nurse or respiratory therapist or what whatever position that they had. And so the labor cost for that job starts to rise. Now the reason, so as time moves forward and inflation continues to get out of control because now you have less people producing. Many people say as a result of the pandemic and the stimulus, people are less willing to work. If they, there's like, there's no point in getting a job if welfare will pay you just as much or maybe slightly under so that you have to do nothing by comparison to actually going out and getting a job. And so the reason why governments love this when people go on strike is because they can only get so much money from the corporations because corporations, of course, know how you know, have the advantage of having all these accountants that work for them. And of course, they can push a lot of that a lot of their earnings into costs. Most people can't, and most people don't have the advantage. They don't have access to many of the benefits of having a corporation, a business, etc. And of course, they don't have access to a lot of the lawyers, etc., to get them through, get to get all these loopholes. So those people end up earning more money, but people forget that taxes are percent based. And of course, as you go higher and higher, you go higher up into the tax base. And so this is what I said. I had said this in a video a long time ago where people were talking about that the inflation was going to destroy the country. And I was like, no, the government wants inflation because they want to inflate the debt away. So now they've created all these dollars. How does the government bring them back home in essence? And that's through, of course, taxation. You go out and you strike. The cost of living is too damn high. The rent is too damn high. You go out and you strike. Like, for example, these nurses at Kaiser. And then you see headlines like this where it says, uh, patient unsure if wife's surgery will go ahead. And So what does this do? This causes the public to be like, hey, you know, these people deserve it. Right. You, we saw this with the truckers. And I talked about this before on social on social media, where you look at social media and all oh, the truck drivers at UPS, they got a raise. They got whatever. And then now they're like, oh, well, well we deserve a raise, too. You get this sort of a me too sort of effect. Right. Hey, the nurses deserve it, too. And the teachers are like, well, hey, well, what about us? And then the people at the sanitation probably were like, hey, we, we deserve a raise too. And then you get the phlebotomist who like, hey, you can't leave us out. And then respiratory therapist is like, what am I, chopped liver? So everybody in essence says, well, hey, if you're going to get access to some of that money, well, me too. And so you get a snowball effect throughout all these different indices. Now, of course, the government is sitting there rubbing their hands because they know now the corporations are giving you that money and the government is going to pull that money out via taxation so before maybe the government could only get 
four trillion in taxes based off of the pre-pandemic economic situation, now they can pull in five trillion, five point five trillion. And so they can have more money in essence to play with. The people, of course, have to deal with the high prices, but the government is now able to work with more money. So this is why you don't see the economy collapsing. People have to become more productive. Moving forward, then of course the only reason that America can get away with this is because they're the world reserve currency. That's the only reason why this continues to go on. Because countries abroad need to hold on to those dollars to go out and buy commodities. Oh, hey, I'm in Argentina. We need to buy wheat. Well, that's going to be X amount of dollars. We want to buy oil. That's an X amount of dollars. Now, other countries are, as they say, de-dollarizing. It could be because there are not enough dollars available to them. It could be that they're tired of America creating inflation and that's why they're de-dollarizing and they're using their own they're using their own currency but it'll make it harder for their own people because now they have to do those deals in their own currency so they have to cause inflation either way now the current the countries that still do business in the dollar because people are like well why is the dollar rising and it's because of the inflation in the beginning america exported all of those dollars abroad during the pandemic right the people went out and they consumed so it flooded all these producer economies with cash. And the Americans were able to consume, pull out all the goods and services from other countries into their country. This is actually how Rome collapsed, but in reverse. In that when they started, because they weren't the world reserve currency and everybody used metal, gold and silver, when they started inflating the currency and other people realized, hey, you're you're liquidating your you're spreading the amount of currency thin by adding in other metals. Well, they were like, hey, we got that same metal right here. And they started counterfeiting the Roman coin. And so then those people started pulling out commodities from Rome. And of course, that's what, that was one of the things that caused the Roman, the Roman economy to collapse. Now, America, of course, is doing it in reverse. They're the world reserve of currency, so they throw out those currencies. So, for example, you're a baby boomer, you're retired, you have X amount of dollars to work with. Well, when America causes inflation, it devalues the currency that you have that you've been holding on to for your day to day, month to month expenses. The same thing happens in foreign countries. Those foreign countries have X amount of dollars that they've been holding on to in their banks. And then they go out into the open market and say, hey, we want some oil. We want some soybean. We need corn, wheat, etc. Now, of course, when America just prints all of these dollars into thin air, it devalues the currency that they have been hoarding to buy the stuff that their people need. And so what happens on their end is that they experience the inflation. They have to raise prices for their own people to cover the cost of being able to go out and buy dollars. And this is what causes the dollars to rise because it takes more of their currency to buy the existing amount of dollars that are out there because of course the government is raising interest rates and not allowing for more currency. So they, they created the inflation rate. They created the inflation. That inflation went abroad. Now the people abroad who are living in Mexico and Colombia, they're living in Venezuela, they're living in whatever country. And they're like, hey, we need dollars. And they're like, well, it's hard to get the dollars. It's going to cost more Venezuelan pesos. It's going to cost more Colombian pesos. It's going to cost more of the Argentine currency, etc. And it collapses those current those countries. And this is what's been going on. And so, from the standpoint of the American people, this is what you get. And this is why I said that we live in a global communist socialist regime, and it's been this way for. The better part of a hundred years that the generations that have existed, like for my example, my generation, Gen X, millennials, etc., they don't understand that this is the economy. They, it's all capitalism. And I'm like, it's not capitalism. This is what you get in socialism. This is what you get in socialism, where you, in essence, don't own your labor because your labor is represented by a bill a dollar or whatever the currency is in your country. And so the central bank owns your labor because they can devalue your labor and steal your labor 
by printing more of the currency. That is what you get in socialism. And of course, communism is where the government then takes those dollars and they go out and they start to seize assets, whether it's in your own country or it's in the country of another of another man in the land. And this is what America did. America printed a whole bunch of these dollars back in the 70s and started buying assets abroad in Europe and then other nations were like, I see what you're doing. Now, in those nations where America had bases, what are you going to do? You are, in essence, occupied. America is occupying your country with a military. What are you going to do? And, of course, the way that America disguises it, right, is, is, is protection. You're, you're paying us protection money. Who are we protecting you from? Well, primarily it's from us. And this is what you see going on in Europe. And this is why America targeted Europe, primarily the German economy, by blowing up the pipeline, causing inflation and energy. And America, and this is their ally. This is their ally. And America said, hey, don't worry about it, buddy. I got you. I'm going to sell you liquid natural gas. And Germany was like, whew, thank goodness. And then America said, at five times the global economic rate. And by the way, you can't buy from nobody else because Putin is sanctioned. And on top of that, we're going to let India refine Russian oil and sell it back to you at a higher rate. <laughs> this, is, this is what goes on in the global economy. And people blame this on capitalism. I'm like, where? Where do you see capitalism? This looks a lot more like social communism. And this is what you got. Where the government owns the assets. Just look at, for example, for me to be a nurse, I got to petition the government for a certificate. Whatever job, almost any job that I want requires a certificate. I need to be certified by the government. So the government, in essence, owns that industry. And they say, no, you can't go into that industry because we said so. You don't have a certificate. Shit, if I want to do nails, you got to have a certificate. If I want to cut somebody's hair, if I want to style your hair, sorry, you need to get certified. By who? The government. Where do you see that in? Not in capitalism. And communism is where you see that. And people sit here and want to have this fight. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's capitalism that's controlling all these things. It has nothing to do with that. These businesses are doing the will of the government. This is why during the pandemic, when people were going out there and they were like, oh, the government, they had lawsuits ready. They were just sitting there with their paperwork ready to walk into the court. This business is forcing their people to take X amount as a result of the government. And so they sued the government. And the judge was like, hold on that fam. The government ain't put no law out there. That's the businesses that are doing it. And they're like, oh shoot, got to go back to the drawing board, redo this paperwork, come back in three months and we'll see your case again. But by then, the businesses were doing the bidding of the government. It wasn't the other way around. The government isn't doing the bidding of the businesses they just work hand in glove at this point because the government is so big and they can start breaking off bread for the people who work in government and this is what you get in communism now of course the only reason that, that they were able to do this was because of the introduction of central banks and most countries nowadays have central banks and central banking is the tenant of marxism this is the most one of the, the most important tenant he who controls the currency i care not who makes the laws as long as I control that money. And if I control the food, I then control the people. And this is what you get. This is what you get. The bourgeoisie versus the proletariat. This has not changed. We still live in the exact same scenario that went on well north of 100 years ago. But people keep on sitting here, blaming it on capitalism. And that's the most important facet one of the most important facets of talking about socialism. How are they able to attack many of these? Western countries by blaming everything on capitalism, making capitalism the enemy so that they can introduce socialism so that they can seize the means of production. And then the people who wanted to work in that system bless them by giving them resources for favors. And this is what you see going on in government. This is what you see. I mean, just look at it back in the days, looking at between linux and microsoft before microsoft became microsoft 
the government was pushing against them by giving Linux special favors because Bill Gates wasn't blessing them with enough donation money. And then Bill Gates started giving them money. And of course, Bill Gates became who Bill Gates is today with being able to speak. He, you know, you have a lot of these people that are the mouthpiece, like Joe Biden. They're the mouthpiece for the regime. You can sit there and say, you know, F Joe Biden, blame it all on Dr. Fauci. But they're just the people that are in the forefront. So that you put all your attention on these people over here. While we're doing shit in the background over here. It's the same thing. People thinking that Trump is going to come in on a, on a white horse and he's going to save the day. And I'm like, Trump was just the one that they put out there. He was the person that they put out there. You see this narrative play out in the courts. If the American government was as evil and corrupt as people say it was, they wouldn't, they wouldn't need to be all this effort. If they really wanted to get rid of Trump, if they really wanted to throw him in jail, they would just do it. It's just WWF, WWE. That's all it is. You're just watching wrestling. One side, uh, you know, one side against the other. And the people are like, oh, if we just get in our guy. But at the end of the day, it's just communism. At the end of the day, it's just socialism for the people. And it's not, it's not going to change until America is no longer the world reserve and other countries want to go a different route until there's some sort of an alternative. I don't see it happening anytime soon it is happening bit by bit but at the end of the day america has to become so weak that their enemies no longer fear them and at that point the american people will be more comfortable with america going to war bombing all these countries i mean shit it's happening right now in syria you see all of these middle eastern countries that are perpetually being bombarded by the united states military and no one says anything. They bomb all these brown countries. And the white ones over here, like Israel. And they're like, hey, it's okay because Israel's our ally. We're okay bombing all of these brown people because these white people over here are our allies. <coughs> it is what it is. And it's important to recognize things as they are. So you're not seeing it here going back and forth thinking, oh, if we just get Trump in office, everything is going to be better. It's like, no, Trump was act one to usher in act two. You got lockdowns, the almost the abandonment of the Constitution, vaccine mandates. Trump printed all the money, ousted nobody under the drain the swamp narrative. He didn't do any of that. And realistically set up the quote unquote right for what you saw on January 6th, which is now the right doesn't protest anymore. And that was the point. Trump didn't come in with anything new. He didn't ride on a white horse. He didn't say, I'm not fucking leaving and arm up. He didn't do any of that. He let all y'all go in there and get bamboozled by the federal government. It is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Feel free to like, comment, and of course, leave your comment below. Let me know your thoughts.